Hey there kids, welcome to another math lesson. And this one is for Eureka Math, grade five, module four, lesson 20, homework. And kind of like I did in the previous video for lesson 19, I made reference to your lesson eight reference sheet that you should have in your learn book. That's the one with the blue outside for us. I don't know what it looks like for you, but that's on page 167, right there in my book. And it's handy to have those um, amounts, the conversions that you may potentially need today, kind of like you did in lesson 19. So anyway, now that you know where to look and what to have handy in front of you, you can get started. So the objective for today's lesson is to convert mixed unit measurements and solve multi-step word problems. So, um, same thing as we've done before, do not panic. The only thing that's different is that we're multiplying with mixed numbers. So I'm gonna show you two strategies that are very helpful and kind of fun. And sometimes, you know, it's better to use one, sometimes it's better to use the other, and you're not gonna know always when to do it. So I'll just show you real quick how to do both, and then you can decide what works best for you. So let's get into it. Uh, the first one's done for you. Um, they are using the mixed number to an improper fraction strategy both times and so i will use that a lot of the time but i am going to introduce a new thing i'll show you real soon so uh, we're changing from yards to feet this is a larger unit to a smaller unit and so we're going to still use that formula where we multiply one of the old unit Okay, so we're applying this formula still, and the equivalent of the new unit. Okay, so one yard is equal to three feet, and that's what you need to know every time you change units. Uh, the second one, they kind of got it started, but then they left us hanging. So we have one and a fourth feet, or yes, feet, because it's actually more than one. Uh, times one foot, one of the old, times the equivalent of the new. Now the new unit is yard, so this is going from a small unit to a large unit. And we're still gonna apply the equivalent formula. Here, the new unit is three. Here, the new unit is one third. So yes, we can multiply fractions by fractions now, and uh, what we're gonna do is to use this improper fraction method when our numbers are really small. So like one and one, that really helps to use just a, a quick little four times one is four plus one is five, that's where you get the five, but four stays the same because that's your label, four fourths, uh, or fourths is the label. One third doesn't change because that's our factor, our scale factor. Then you multiply those, and if you go straight across and um, you can have just like this, you can have your uh, improper fraction first, or in this case, it would be a proper fraction because again, our factor, our scale factor is only a fraction of a number. Okay, new label, and we're done. And if you wanna write it twice, go ahead. Okay, so on the next one, they took away all the scaffolding, but just go back and copy as needed. Remember, it always starts with that equals, and we don't have to keep doing three and five, six feet. Three and five, six feet. You can just hop it over here. Three and five, six times one foot. That's one of the old unit first. Then take your number that we're working with, and we're gonna multiply by the equivalent of the new unit. Now, if I'm talking about one foot, and then I wanna talk about the same distance in inches, you have to know that one foot equals 12 inches. This is your scale factor for this one. Now, here's where I'm gonna show you two things. If I was to wrap this all up into an improper fraction, just like we did here and here, six times three is 18 plus five, that would be in two pieces, 19, 20 plus three is 23. multiply by um, the 12, and I'm putting the 12 in a whole number fraction over one so that I can see if I was gonna use my commutative property or the cross canceling, then I would have 23 times two, which is 46. Now that's one way to do it. 
I want to show you real quick for all you math people out there who love to do something really exciting. In, in algebra, in the months and years to come, I want you to realize that 12 has to be multiplied by both parts of this mixed number. So what you can do is you can take 3 times 12 out of this. This is extra, so don't panic if you don't get it. Don't worry about it if you're kind of confused. And then you can take 5 sixths times 12 over 1. And then what we have is a little bit, we're kind of simplifying it, and it becomes just a straight whole number multiplication problem that you might know off the top of your head. Then we simplify here and get 10. We still get our 46 inches, but I'm just taking apart the whole number in the fraction and multiplying both parts by 12, add them together. So sometimes it's easier like this, and sometimes it's easier like this. So there are your two options, uh, but the book tends to do, in the beginning, they do this method, and later they're going to switch over to this. Moving right along, times one pint, seven and a half times. What is a pint when compared with a quart? So one pint is only half of a quart. Hopefully you knew that. Now again, when the numbers are pretty small, it's okay to wrap it all up into an improper fraction. Uh, 2 times 7 is 14, plus 1 is 15, that's where I'm getting that, times 1 half. When you multiply straight across, you don't have anything that can cross cancel because that's they're both odd numbers on top. So you end up with 15 fourths, which we don't want to leave in an improper fraction. You should not really ever do that unless the point of the lesson is to find the improper fraction. And so now divide 15 by 4. 3 times 4 is 12. And there are 3 left over. Put your new unit because this is all about changing the label. Okay? Scooching down here. Use your formula again. 4 and 3 tenths times one hour, four and three tenths times. What's our new unit? What's one hour in minutes? Now notice that these numbers are a little bit bigger. And so if I was to wrap this up into an improper fraction, I would have 43 tenths times 60 over one. I would insist that you remember the cross-canceling that you can do. When this is a multiple of this number, please cross-cancel. It's going to make your multiplication so much easier when you have to multiply across the top with these big numbers. 6 times 3, 18, carry. This is 24 plus 1 is 25. Label with your new label. And I didn't say at the beginning, and I should say every day, you should have already done this. This is just a check. You shouldn't be copying. I want you to try first with your own brain and kind of struggle through it and see if you can do it before I help you through it. Okay, so 4 and 3 tenths hours is equivalent to 258 minutes. Can you use the other method on this? Yes, you can. You would have a 4 times 60 first, and then you would add the 3 tenths times 60 from this calculation. This becomes kind of an easy multiplication because that's 240. And then this you can cross cancel still, but you only have 18. Then you have 240 plus 18 for the 258, and you still get the same answer. So it just depends on how you see it or how you prefer to do your calculations. All right, 33 times one of the old unit, one month. 33 times the equivalent in new. So one month is what? This is a fraction, one twelfth of a year. So uh, since we have a whole number here, we're just gonna multiply it across. 33 times one is 33, and then one times 12 is 12. So 33 divided by 12. So how many times can you fit it in? Well, not three, because that would be 36. So it's two, and then the difference between 24 and 33. 
Nine twelfths can be simplified using three. Three six nine, that's three times. Three six nine twelve, that's four times. So your answer is two and three fourths years. Okay. I hope you're kind of getting the hang of it again. It's just using that formula over and over and over until you get comfortable with it. All right, four members of a track team run a relay race in 165 seconds. How many minutes did it take them to run the race? You're simply going to take your 165 seconds, which is your old unit, show the equivalent in minutes. Apply your formula. Move this to here times one of the old. Copy your factor and then multiply by one of the new, the equivalent of the new. Okay, so one second is only one sixtieth of a minute because there are 60 seconds in a minute. So now I have this pretty big number 165 times 1 for 165 over 60. Now at this point, I would always say, instead of setting up your long division, I would say, gosh, can we simplify this before we multiply it? And you might recognize that even though it, this is not divisible by 10, they are both divisible by 5. Okay, if you, if you change the top, you must change the bottom using the same number. It's a ratio from the top to the bottom. We have to keep our fraction at the same ratio, okay, to each other. So divide both numbers by 5 so we can simplify. So 16 is the first part of 165. 5 goes into 16 three times with one left over, which we regroup with this, and that makes 15, and that's 3. Then divide 60 by 5, and if you know your facts, then you know that that's uh, 12, because 12 times 5 is 60. Now you have a little bit of an easier division problem instead of this one. You're welcome to set it up with your division either way, with this one or this one. I just think it's easier to do it this way, because now I know just by counting that 12 goes into 33, real similarly to the one we did before, two whole times, but from 24 to 33, that is a difference of nine, and then you get your nine twelfths, which you can simplify into three fourths by dividing both the top and the bottom by three. Again, divide the top and the bottom by the same number. This time it's three. Nine divided by three, three. Twelve divided by three, four. And so that is your final answer for number two. All right, number three. Horace, what a great name. Horace buys two and three fourths pounds of blueberries for a pie. He needs 48 ounces of blueberries for the pie. How many more pounds of blueberries does he need to buy? So you can approach this a couple different ways. We have the pounds, but we need this much. So if I know what this is in pounds, then all I have to do is find the difference. So this might be an easier way to start. Could you convert this to ounces and then subtract? Yes, you can. So if you did it that way, that's totally fine. In fact, I think when I have done it before, I've done it both ways. And then just to work with the kids, um, you know, we, we share everything. So it's like, well, this is one way and this is another way and they're all good. So 48 ounces, let's see how many pounds that is. Apply your formula times one of the old times the equivalent of the new. So one ounce is only one sixteenth of a pound. That gives us 48 sixteenths, which is actually not too difficult to solve. Um, you probably don't know your your multiples of 16. I wouldn't either if I was in fifth grade. I would probably look at this and say, uh, they're multiples of eight, okay? And so I might do 48 divided by eight is six, and then 16 divided by eight is two, and then you realize, oh, I could simplify that again by dividing both by two. So this is a typical fifth grade thought. 
6 divided by 2 is 3, and 2 divided by 2 is 1. And so then you realize that there are three 16s and 48 because the answer is 3, so 3 pounds. Okay, so um, what if I, instead of dividing by 8 and then dividing by 2, what if I divided by 16? Yeah, you'd get the 3 right away, but no fifth grader would really know that because most of them don't count by 16s regularly. So anyway, where do we, where do we go with this? What does that mean? Well, go back to the problem. He buys this, but he needs this. He needs three pounds, okay? But he has two and three-fourths. So now we need to find the difference between three and three and two and three-fourths. And that's really what makes this easier to start and do it this way because we have a pretty simple subtraction problem here. Now, if you remember from a, I don't know, a bunch of lessons ago, three minus two would give us one, but you still have to subtract the three-fourths. That is uh, one of the last things. It's like you have to complete it to make it whole, so the difference between one and three-fourths would be one-fourth. Okay, and I know some of my students have, this is their favorite method. They're like, oh my gosh, we get to do that again. Yes, yes you do. So uh, how many more pounds of blueberries he needs to buy? You buy one fourth pound more. And so that's your pounds. Could you do the whole ounces and then switch it to pounds? Yes, you could. But it's actually, I don't know, pretty easy to do it this way. So as long as you got your quarter pound, you're good. Don't forget to click to subscribe. Click that little button. Just do it. Just do it. All right, here we go. Tiffany is sending a package that may not exceed 16 pounds. The package contains books that weigh a total of 9 and 3 eighths pounds. The other items to be sent weigh 3 fifths the weight of the books. 3 fifths of that. Will Tiffany be able to send the package? Such a real life problem. So the first thing we need to do is look at or try to find out the other items. We know the, the weight of the books. We don't know the weight of the other items, but they are three-fifths of something we know. Three-fifths of nine and three-eighths. And so I, I don't typically do a mixed number multiplication by a fraction unless I want to set it all up and work it out in two parts. But for this one, why don't we just do three fifths times, make it an improper fraction, 72, 73, 74, 75 eighths. And I see that I can cross cancel with five and 75. So how many times can you fit five into five? One time. How about 75? So seven is more than five. That's gonna be one there, but two carry over for 25. That's where you get your 15. Three times 15, work it out on, on the side if you need to, is 45 over eight. And then eight divided, sorry, 45 divided by eight or eight into 45, five whole times because eight times five is 40, five left over. So what is that? Three fifths of nine and three eighths pounds is five and five eighths pounds for the other items. Okay, now we have books and other items. And we need to know the total. I could do a tape diagram right there. We know that the books are nine and three eighths. We now know that the other items are five and five eighths. Thank goodness they have a common denominator because, sorry, could you see that the whole time? Probably not. Uh, we know they have a common denominator so we can add right away. Nine and five is 14, five and three is eight, and it's over eighths. So what does that mean? That means this is one. So 14 plus one is 15. 15 what? 15 pounds total for her package weight. But the question is still, will Tiffany be able to send the package? What is the maximum amount? 16, and 16 is greater than 15, so yes, she can send it.
Yes, she can. And that is your final little piece of work right there. Yes, she can. It's really coming down to a comparison. So I hope this was helpful, and I hope you guys come back again. And don't forget to click to subscribe. We'll see you on another video. Bye for now.